my invisible friends hello and welcome back to our series on electrical engineering today it is about another tutorial recitation on power in AC steady state in the beginning I had thought of creating two separate videos but the two exercises that we will be working on are so short and so closely related to one another that I figured it would be better to package them together as a single video. Previously, we've learned that if a circuit that is represented by 7 and equivalent is feeding an external impedance ZX and the ZX, the external impedance, has a value that is a complex conjugate of the 7 and impedance of the circuit, that impedance absorbs maximum active power, Pmax. And you say, maximum active power? Yes. Not apparent power, not reactive power, maximum active power, maximum average power, P. And you say, but the active power is the power in the real part of that impedance. And that is correct. We compute the current IX that flows through that external impedance, and then P max, the average power, will be the resistance of that external impedance, which happens to be R7 and multiplied by the square or the RMS value of that current. But if the phasors are given as peak valued phasors, then we have to divide that formula by 2. This is the exercise. The question is, what should be the value of the external impedance ZL on the far right that absorbs maximum power? Report the value of the impedance and report the value of that maximum power in watts. I recommend that before Proceeding, you watch this video that I made for you a while ago. At that port, find the 7 and equivalent. Obviously, that is the first step in the solution to this exercise. I replace that external impedance by a resistor Rx. What are the reference nodes and the nodes 1 and 2? Choose the direction for the currents in the branches and we begin. I write the case hill equation 1, the one for this node. Currents going in, the one from the left. 12 minus 1 divided by 1. Currents leaving the node, the one on the top. V1 minus V2 divided by negative J. And the one in the inductor on the left. V1 divided by J. Case hill 2 corresponding to this node over here. Currents going in, there are two currents going in. V1 minus V2 over negative J. And the current in that current source, 2 times V0. But V0 is just V1, so it's 2 V1. The current leaving the node is just V2 divided by Rx. We solve that system of equations and we get V1 and V2. Observe that V2 is the one we're interested in because that will be the voltage in the external resistor Rx. And it is that voltage V2 is a, is a function of Rx as it should be. Let me extract that voltage and put that in the variable Rx. That is V2, that is Vx, the voltage in that external resistor, a function of Rx. The current in that resistor is that Vx divided by Rx, which is also a function of Rx. And then what? And then we find the open circuit voltage and the short circuit current in one go. How? V7, and which is the open circuit voltage, is the limit of Vx as Rx tends to positive infinite. That is 6 plus J 18 volts. And the short circuit current is the limit of the current Ix as Rx tends to 0, which is 24 plus J 12 amperes. If we divide V7 by I short circuit, we get the 7 and impedance, like so. So the 7 and impedance of that circuit at that port is 0 0.5 plus J 0 0.5 ohms. And we have agreed that the external impedance Zx should be the complex conjugate of Z7 and 0 0.5 minus J 0 0.5 ohms. The current in the external resistor 
will be the Thevenin voltage divided by the series combination of the Thevenin impedance and the external impedance Zx. Pmax will be the real part of Zx multiplied by the square root of the absolute value of the current Ix and divided by 2. Why do we divide by 2? Because that 12 volts phaser on the left was given as a peak value. So the maximum power that we can extract out of that circuit is 90 watts. And that is that question. Now we go for another one. And for that we remember that if a circuit is represented by Thevenin equivalent and it's feeding an external resistor Rx this time, so that the value of the external resistor is the absolute value of the Thevenin impedance in that case. That resistor is absorbing maximum average power. And the value of that power can be computed if we find the current in that resistor, V Thevenin, divided by the series combination of the resistor and the Thevenin impedance. And then we compute the power, Rx by the square of the RMS value of that current. And if what we have is a peak value, by all means we divide that by 2 and we get the maximum power in that resistor. And this is the exercise. ZL is to be a resistor. What should be the value of that resistor ZL such that it absorbs maximum power out of the circuit? Well, you know what I'm going to do. It is some um, find the seven and equivalent at that port. Before looking at this, please watch that video I've told you before. So let me replace that external impedance with that external resistor Rx, where we will compute Vx and Ix and do whatever we need to do to find the seven and impedance of the circuit and the maximum average power. Choose the reference node. Identify the other nodes 1, 2, and 3. And I choose the directions for the branch currents. Observe that I've given names to those currents that appear in more than one case hill equation. Currents A on the top and currents B at the bottom. I identify what is the current in the source. It is 5 with pi over 2 radians. 5 with 90 degrees. And the currents A and B. Current A on the top is V2 minus V1 divided by negative J10. Current B on the bottom is V1 minus V3 divided by 40. So we write the three case hill equations for node 1, node 2, and node 3. Observe that I made a typo writing the current source in the middle equation in case hill 2, but I promise I fixed it before I pressed the key for their solution. I solve the system of those three equations and find V1, V2, and V3. V1 is Vx, the one I'm interested in. I extract that and assign that to the variable Vx. And then we do the same as before. V7 is the limit of Vx as Rx tends to positive infinity. And then I compute what is the current Ix in that external resistor, Vx divided by Rx. If you're asking yourself, what is that eval f? Eval f means evaluate as a floating point number. I don't want an expression. I don't want an exact ratio of integer numbers. I want a floating point value. And normal is one way of simplifying the expression. Well, and the current in that, the short circuit current at that port, is the limit of that current Ix as Rx tends to zero. Divide V7 by I short circuit and we get the Thevenin impedance. The rest is the same. The value of the external resistor that absorbs maximum active power is the absolute value of that impedance, which happens to be a resistor 2. That is a coincidence for this exercise. 20 ohms. The current in the load, we compute that as before, V7 and divided by the series combination of the Thevenin impedance and the external resistor. And finally, the power in that resistor is the maximum average power, resistance of the load, multiplied by the square of the absolute value of the current in the load. 
divided by 2 because the current phaser on the right is a peak valued phaser. So the maximum power that we can absorb out of this circuit and that port with an external resistor is 31.25 watts. And that is that, my students. Thank you very much for watching. And I hope to meet with you again in our next video.